All right, let's talk about how you deal with the situation where you're trying to find what concentration of acid would make a particular pH. Now, if this was a strong acid, this would be a very straightforward calculation. You would just 10 to the power of the negative pH gives you the hydrogen ion concentration. And if this were a strong acid, hydrogen ion concentration would be equal to the acid concentration if this was a strong acid. However, for a weak acid, this will not be equal to the concentration of this. It will be different numbers for which you will need a, um, equi e equilibrium coefficient. And so because of that, we need to go through a series of steps. Plan is we use this to figure out the hydrogen ion concentration, and then we'll use the equilibrium cons the e equilibrium equation, the K equals product over reactant. That will give us the, um, the hydrogen ion would be the, one of the things here. The hydrogen ion concentration, along with the anion concentration, would give us the information we need to find the original acid concentration. And why is this valid? Well, because some acid, HA, any acid, including this acid, when it dissociates in water, will lose a proton and we'll leave behind some sort of anion. So our plan is to use this number to get this, and from here we can figure out what these are. This will be the same as this, because after all, look at this balanced equation. For every one of these, there's one of these and one of these. So from this, we can get these, and then from these, and we can look this number up in a table, more specifically, the one that looks like this, we can look it up there. Um, that would allow us to have this and this and this and solve for this, and this is what is going to be the answer to this question. We need to solve this. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to begin by finding out what these are so we can get this. So 10 to the negative pH is the hydrogen ion concentration. So 10 to the negative pH equals hydrogen ion concentration which means 10 to the negative 1.56 equals hydrogen ion concentration for this particular scenario. And that particular number is approximately 0 0.027542 blah, 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 molar hydrogen ion. Wrong significant figures, but that's okay. It's not the final answer. Anyway, doing that now, Let's think about what we're going to need to do. This, to be clear, is what this is. In fact, this is going to be the same amount as this. After all, one-to-one -one ratio in the equation. So both of these will be the same number. We'll get this off the table, and we'll just solve for this. Um, let's look at that with an ice table, though, just to be totally clear on what we're looking at. Ice table. Okay, there we go. That's a nice table where we have the initial concentration, the concentration at equilibrium, sorry, the change in concentration, and this is the concentration at equilibrium, aka at the end. So we'll do this for HA. That's sloppy H, but you get the idea. H, that's the reactant, and here's one of the products, here's the other products. At the beginning, you'll put in some concentration that we're trying to solve for. We're trying to find out what is the original concentration. So we want to know what initial concentration of acid would produce this pH. The hydrogen ion concentration would initially be zero when you put it in the water. And then what's the change? Well, the change is however much dissociates. So what we found here is that the hydrogen ion concentration will end up being this because that, that's what it would take to make pH of 1.56. It would have to be this much hydrogen in solution. So however much hydrogen is formed, it's this much. So plus, let's see, what is this? 2.7542 times 10 to the negative 7. 2.7542 times 10 to the negative, sorry, 1, 2 times 10 to the negative 2nd plus 2.7542 
times 10 to the negative second minus 2.7542 times 10 to the negative second. Remember, for every one of these that you gain, you lose one of these. So that's why these numbers are the same, just losing and gaining. So what's your final concentration at equilibrium? Whatever you started with, minus 2.7542 times 10 to the negative second. This doesn't all fit on the paper, but I think you get the idea. This will be 2.7542 times 10 to the negative second. That's the concentration of hydrogen ion you'll have at the end. 2.7542 times 10 to the negative second. That's the concentration of anion that you'll have left over at the end. And we'll assume units of moles per liter here. So this equilibrium concentration is what goes into the expression here, not the beginning concentrations. After all, if you plug zero in for here and zero in for here, you're going to get nothing. But these numbers will get plugged in. So we need K equals this. So we need to look up the number. What is K? So we find the appropriate acid on there. And we got chlorous acid, HClO2, 1.1 times 10 to the negative second. Okay. So... I'll just write it again for clarity. K equals hydrogen ion concentration times anion concentration over acid concentration. 1.1 times 10 to the negative second is the value of K from the table. Value of H is the concentration right here. It doesn't matter scientific notation or not for this particular one because it's not my final answer. So 0 0.02 seven five four two that's for the hydrogen ion we're going to rewrite the exact same number again for the anion left over that'll be what goes on top and on the bottom we'll have x minus 0 0.27542 oops forgot a zero you see that little zero out right there right okay so that's what we have. We need to solve for X, which is the original concentration of the acid, this right here. This can be a little complicated when you rearrange and solve it. It's doable. It's not that bad as if you're taking Algebra 2. You've gone through this kind of math. But we do want to simplify things to make the calculation easier. So it's time for me to lie to you. I'm going to tell you a nice little white lie. And the little white lie I'm going to tell you is that this number is so small compared to this one that it's not going to change the overall volume so we can simply ignore it and have it just be x on the bottom. So we're going to say ignore this because it is much smaller than x. I'm just finishing uh, the explanation here. I mean, it will change it a bit, but it won't be all that much. And after you round off to the right sig figs, it might be not at all. So this is a lie. It does change it, but it's not that much. So eh, close enough. We're going to say my little white lie is that this doesn't matter and we can ignore it. That's a lie, it's not true, but whatever, we're gonna say it's close enough for our purposes anyway. So 1.1 times 10 to the negative second, see the same one right here, is equal to, and see how this is the same number? 0, 0.0, actually I'll, I was gonna combine it, but I'll do that later. 27542 times the exact same number again, 0.0. .0. 27542 divided by x. See that? I'm lying to you when I say that this is the same thing, because it's not, but we're going to say this is small enough that it's not going to significantly change your answer if you leave it out. So there's my little white lie to make the calculation easier.
So I'm going to combine these two because it's the same number. 1.1 times 10 to the negative second equals 0 0.027542 squared over x. Right? We combine these into just the same number squared. So that's easy. All right, what do we do now? We need to solve for x. So times both sides by x. So times x times x. Oops, times x. These cancel. All right, now we have x times 1.1 times 10 to negative second. Maybe x wasn't the best choice of variable because now, uh, whatever. Equals 0 0.027542 squared. And then let's divide both sides by this. Divided by 1.1 times 10 to the negative second. Divided by 1.1 times 10 to the negative second. That way these cancel, leaving just x on that side. So x equals 0 0.027542 squared over 1.1 times 10 to the negative second. Again, just make sure, big picture, what are we doing? What is this x again? This x was the bottom of the equilibrium expression, which is the concentration of the acid. And we said, we're going to say, why am I just using x instead of this? We're going to say, well, only a tiny portion of the acid dissociates, so this is almost the same number as this. So we're just going to lie and pretend that it is the same number. So we're just going to pretend that this number and this number are the same. Even though it's a lie, it makes the calculation easier not having to deal with this. So that's how we got here. And then we just rearrange into solve for x. And when we do that, x equals, let's see, I did the calculation earlier. What did it come out to as? Um, 2.5 blah, 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 blah. So approximately 2.5. Rounding for two sig figs. Two sig figs, two sig figs. Now remember, what does x represent again? It's the original concentration of the acid. So we're going to say the concentration of the acid, which is the acid is HClO2, is 2.5 molar. And that is our final answer. Just darken it up to make it clearer. All right. There it is, there we have it, and one last final look over the whole thing. That's a lot of steps, but as long as you're good with following the individual ones like what they mean, and practice with this, you'll be good. There we have it.